What's going on everybody? Greg with RC Driver here and this is episode number eight of our Get Into RC video series. Now for the next few videos in this series, what I'm gonna talk about are parts. More specifically, what the name of the parts are on the car. And I'm gonna break it out into a few videos. In this video right here, I'm gonna talk about suspension parts. Then I'm gonna talk about drivetrain parts in the next video and probably chassis parts in the last one. Now, the reason why I want you to know the name of the parts is because when you break something, I want you to be able to walk into your hobby shop and ask for the specific part. As you know, I used to work in a hobby shop and we'd have people come in and say, I need the plastic thingy that holds the wheel on. Well, that's just a little too vague. And so, you know, if you have the right terminology, you could walk into the hobby shop, look like a pro from the start and get the part that you need right away. So I'm gonna talk about two wheel drive cars and four wheel drive cars, and I'm gonna give you as many specific names as possible so you know the style of part that's on your car. There are, are a lot of variations out there in uh, style of parts and design and stuff like that. So there may be some variations, but you'll get the general idea and you'll know what part you're talking about when you walk into that hobby shop. So I have both a two wheel drive vehicle here and a four wheel drive vehicle here to talk about the suspension components. The two wheel drive is a Traxxas Slash and the four wheel drive is a Lozy 8 buggy. So I'm actually going to start off with the wheel because the wheel is considered part of the suspension. So this is the wheel here, and or you know some people call it the rim. Uh, this is obviously the tire, I'm sure you knew that. And then this is the wheel hex part of the rim on the inside. Now just as an additional note, uh, there are different offsets for the wheels, and that means the distance between where the hex mounts and the outside of the rim. So, you know, if you're building a custom vehicle or like in this case with the Traxxas Slash, the offset for the front is different from the rear. So you wanna make sure that you get the correct offset for your vehicle if you suspect your vehicle does have a different offset. All right, moving on. This is the stub axle, the axle that goes inside uh, the wheel that the wheel bolts to. Uh, this is the wheel nut, of course. And then over here we have a hex and that's what uh, the wheel adapts to. Now, generally on 10 scale cars, there is a 12 millimeter hex, and over on the eight scale here, this is a 17 millimeter hex, excuse me, a 17 millimeter hex, and there are a number of different size hexes, but we'll get more into that when we talk about the drivetrain. I just wanna to stick to suspension in this video. So we will move on to the inner uh, spindle here. So on a two wheel drive, this is typically called a spindle or a steering block. And that's what turns uh, the wheels there. And over on the four wheel drive, this is typically called a steering knuckle when it's on a four wheel drive vehicle. All right, back over to the two wheel drive. This is called a caster block. And over on the four wheel drive, it's sometimes called a caster block or an upright. All right, back to the two wheel drive. We're onto the suspension arm here. So this is typically what a suspension arm looks like. It's that large chunk of plastic that goes from the inboard hinge pins to the outside hinge pins here. Now up top, we have what's called a turnbuckle on this particular vehicle. Now a turnbuckle is made up of several parts. So this is the turnbuckle itself. And then we have the ball ends. And then inside the ball ends are balls. They're small little pivot balls and that's what the suspension pivots on. Now some vehicles are fixed link and this particular buggy over here has a fixed link. So this is just a plastic link here. It's fixed. You can't make adjustments to it like you can over here on a turnbuckle. And this also have, has pivot balls inside and obviously they're uh, secured with screws and sometimes nuts on the back end. Okay, now back here, you can see through the uh, the arm in the upper turnbuckle is the steering turnbuckle. And again, over here on the four wheel drive, that's a fixed link. Actually, I'm just gonna go back to this four wheel drive car for a second, because I'm moving from the outside in. On this particular car, it is equipped with a sway bar. The sway bar connects to the, the two arms together. And this right here is the bar itself. We have a ball end and we have a sway bar link. And these are end caps that secure the sway bar uh, to the uh, front bulkhead here. So what a sway bar does is actually when you go into the corner, it pushes up on the other arm. Let me move over here. Pushes up on the other arm to help the chassis stay level. That's what a sway bar does. But we're not gonna go into too much technical stuff here again. I'm just gonna go over what these parts are called. All right, back over here to the two wheel drive slash. This is a hinge pin brace. 
And these are the hinge pins right here. These, these are pins that go through the arm and through the block for the pivot motion here. So these can sometimes be held with E-clips. Sometimes they screw in. Sometimes they have a, uh, a nut on the other end and it's called a screw pin, but they are just basically long pins that go through the arm for the pivot. And it's the same over here uh, on the, on the four wheel drive, we have a inner hinge pin pivot. Uh, however, there are a few little differences here. So instead of a suspension pin brace, it is, it is kind of a brace. This is called a suspension block here because the block is mounted uh, separate from a inner bulkhead. We're going to talk about the bulkhead in a second. Uh, sometimes these are adjustable, so you could get different size uh, plates or they have different inserts on the inside of them. So if, if you bend one of these, you, you ask for a suspension pivot, uh, where on a two wheel drive, we have a bulkhead. And that's what this large piece is here. So the bulkhead connects the, uh, to the chassis and then to the arms. Next up, we have the shock tower. And let me just do a little adjustment here. There we go, that's the shock tower right there. And it basically does what it says. It is a tower that go, runs from the bulkhead up to up to a higher point where the shock mounts to. And it's the same over here. This is the shock tower. This one is aluminum. The other was plastic. Uh, so that gives you an idea of that. Now I've removed the shock from this vehicle just so I could tell you a little bit more about uh, the shock mounting parts. So this is a shock mounting post here. This is the post that the shock mounts to on this particular vehicle. And then if there is a small a piece of plastic on that post that is called a shock bushing and then of course we have a retaining washer here and a retaining nut on the specific vehicle uh, over here on the Traxxas vehicle it's a little different they use what's called a screw pin and it's a screw that goes from the outside into a boss on the shock tower so i've turned the Traxxas slash around so i could talk about the rear suspension for just a little bit a lot of the same parts carry over uh, the main difference here is the rear typically has what's called a hub carrier and it carries the rear axle. So that's this piece right here. And again, it has the hinge pin pivots. Uh, this is a, an example here of a hinge pin. So you can see what it looks like outside of the car. This particular one has an E-clip retained hinge pin. And like I said, sometimes they could be retained with a screw style head or they have a nut on the other end. Uh, so that's that. And then this is the suspension arm back here. Now, suspension arms sometimes have a variety of names. Uh, sometimes they're called an H arm. Sometimes they're called an A arm. Sometimes they're called wishbones. Uh, so, but if basically, if you walk into a hobby shop and say you need a tr rear tracks of suspension arm, your hobby shop dealer will be able to grab that part for you. And again, here's your turn buckle. Uh, we have the mounting screws, the pivot balls. Uh, these are the shocks here, and I'm going to talk about the shock components individually, individually in a second here. And uh, over here is the rear shock tower. Now let's talk about shock parts. And to do that, I broke down a Proline Power Stroke shock here. So let's start over on this side. And this is that upper bushing I was telling you about that goes into the shock cap. And here we have a spring, obviously. This is a suspension spring. I'm going to move that over here so it stops rolling around. And then this is the lower spring perch, and that's what retains the spring to the bottom of the shock shaft. All right, moving over, this is the shock cap. And sometimes inside the shock cap, there is a bladder, and that's what that looks like there. Sometimes shocks are built without bladders, and they have what's called a little bleed screw that's on the side of the cap, but a lot of ready-to-runs have the bladder. These are the shock guide and seal components. So what we have here is a washer. This is a plastic washer. Sometimes they're nylon washers and then an O-ring and then another thicker washer and then another O-ring. And where that goes is right inside here, inside the bottom of the shock body. And what that does is it seals the oil from leaking out. Uh, so this is an item where you want to make sure that they're clean. You don't want any dirt building up on the bottom of the shocks because these parts can get ruined. Just a little tip for you there. And then to retain those parts inside the bottom of the shock body, you have a lower shock cap. Uh, if you have an older vehicle or some vehicles, I, I think still use a, a knee clip to retain these parts, but a lot of companies use a shock cap now that screws onto the bottom. So this is the shock body itself. Uh, as you can see, this is a threaded shock body, and that is how you adjust the preload of the spring with this collar right here. You turn the collar down and it pushes down on the spring to adjust the preload 
uh, and then adjust the right height of the vehicle, but we'll get into that technical stuff later. Again, we're just gonna stick with some, some parts here. Sometimes uh, this isn't threaded, it's just a smooth body and they give plastic clips that uh, slide over the body to adjust the preload and those are called preload clips. Okay, we're almost done. Moving over to the bottom here. This is a lower shock end and it's similar to the, the ball cups that were on the, uh, the turnbuckles, but here it's called a ball end uh, and there is a ball inside of it. This particular shock had a lower bump stop in it, so that's what that is. And then this is the shock shaft here. So that's the shaft. Sometimes there's a washer at the top of it uh, where the piston is and then a retaining nut or sometimes E-clips are used to retain the shock piston. All right, and then I have a Lozy shock over here that I just want to show you guys on the outside here. This particular shock has a shock boot or a dust boot and that protects those inner parts from getting damaged or debris or dirt into them. So that's the makeup of a shock. I'm just throwing it out there that I may not have mentioned every single suspension part that's out there, but I'm sure you get the general idea. So for a trail truck, instead of suspension arms, we have suspension links, and they're very similar to the turnbuckles that are used on uh, the suspension arms of the cars that I just talked about. As you can see, there's this long rod here, and there's a screw in here with a ball in, and we have the pivot balls. So that is definitely similar, but it is different, and it does use a different term, a suspension link. Uh, up here in the front, Instead of a hub carrier, uh, we have a C carrier here. So in, or instead of a, a caster block, it is a C carrier on in this specific vehicle. So again, terminology, terminology is a little bit different. And then up, up top here, sometimes people call this a shock hoop on a trail truck or, you know, they're still called a shock tower, but there are various names for some of the components. Uh, so you have a general understanding now and uh, I'm sure your hobby shop dealer will know what you're talking about when you ask for a shock hoop versus the plastic thingy that holds on the shock. Wow, I just threw a lot of suspension terms at you, and I know it may seem overwhelming, but don't worry, the quiz on Monday won't be so bad. No, I'm just kidding. I know now you'll be able to walk into a hobby shop, ask for the part that you need, and they'll be able to give it to you. As always, thanks for watching, and if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe and click that notifications button so you know when our next video comes out. And if you have a specific question about your suspension, please throw it in the comment section below, and either I or one of our awesome viewers will get back to you.